Hello, yeah, as already said, I'm Nick, and today I'm going to share my story and uh, also hope a lot of the trade offs and, and thinking behind like designing an end to end encryption protocol. And before we actually like, get deep into the rabbit hole, um, like the uh, can I, yes, um, I want to. Uh, probably the, the main question, I don't know if you have it, but like, I would, uh, like, why? why? Why would someone do that, design an end-to-end -end encryption protocol? Uh, what is the need here? And basically, um, to get right into that, um, my journey started probably a couple of years ago um, when end-to-end -end encryption became a thing for messengers and and. Uh, basically, and, uh, I saw like messengers adopting end-to-end -end encryption and like, oh, well, the UX is actually good and, and it works. And, and I was really fascinated because for me, UX and security often were, were this like uh, opposite concept or it was hard to get it right. And, and I was very intrigued by the idea. Um, and if I think about uh, the future, or at least an utopian version of the future with, um, I imagine people, like in 200 years, I would love to have a future where um, even earlier than that, ideally, uh, where people have control over the data. Um, so we don't need to imply end-to-end -end encryption everywhere and what not, but uh, some data makes a lot of sense to be public. But like, I would love to have to control uh, over the data that I create, that I share, that I collaborate with other people to know like who really has access. Because nowadays with only encryption in transit and encryption at rest, which is like the default pattern for, for most of um, uh, the, the data uh, that we have in terms of security, like you often don't really know who has access to your data. Like, um, yeah, basically almost everything now, nowadays, except some messengers and, and some, some other systems. Um, but this requires the products we build um, because right now, yeah, this is not the, not the case. I mean, with, with a couple of exceptions. Um, so I was thinking of like, okay, because we already have this um, for messengers, why don't we have it for documents? Why don't we have it for other kinds of data? And yes, there's many, many reasons. Um, one of them was like a major blocker for me when I, when I thought like, can we do it? I mean, a soft, I'm a software developer, uh, could I just, gather some small uh, smart minds and like build stuff and i realized like a couple of years back like one major thing is uh, one major problem is like uh, how to resolve conflicts um after data and then um, i worked with with uh, kevin Jans, uh, who built a, a cdd implementation and learned basically you can resolve conflicts on the client and it it, it simplifies the whole process um and this was like my my big realization. Wow, we, we can actually make this this uh, this possible. I'm not gonna go into this today, like how why combine them and how and so on, because this would be a completely different talk and would sit here until under until midnight. I would love to talk about it, but uh, not today. Um, and then, yeah, as soon as I realized like this is possible, um, I like one and a half years ago, roughly, um, just as a hobby, I, 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 I mean, I had no idea about implementing end to end encryption, what's there, and so on and so forth. Um, so I just went as a hobby and, and started to like really get into the topic. Um, and yeah. Um, uh, basically ended up like set the goal that I want to build a document editor, um, at least for the beginning, a simple one uh, where I can share end-to-end -end encrypted or collaborate with other people and also with my own devices, end-to-end uh, -end encrypted notes, documents. Um, and yeah, uh, two months ago or something like that, I, I released the first public version of Serenity Notes. Uh, so it's an end-to-end -end encrypted document app, um, has collaborative editing. So I can show this in a second. Um, it's multi-platform. So right now there's an iOS and an Android client. The macOS uh, client is in, in, in alpha or beta. And uh, I wanted to make it offline first because I care about UX and, and yeah. And this is a, a short video demo of how it works. For example, here would be two devices, could be your own or collaborating with someone else. And I can write on the other one and 
uh, I, you can see how it swings. So, so this is actually a real recording of like uh, two simulators and, and uh, syncing um, over the server. And between these devices, um, the server has no idea about the content. Um, it, I mean, you, you know, it knows something like metadata and so on and so forth, but like the content itself is, is because it's end-to-end -end encrypted, the server doesn't know about it basically like with signal or element, um, um, you can be sure that uh, the server doesn't know uh, your message content. And so this was the, the intro. And before we get into it, uh, I'm here to share. Um, I'm, I, I want to share my, my knowledge, but I'm also here to be challenged. Um, um, so I mean, I'm just one person. Like I got into this like one, one and a half years ago and like uh, learning every day. Um, and yeah, but if you have good ideas, if you, if you have concerns, anything like, let me know, this is the best way how, how, um, I can be, I, I can improve, I, I can improve the protocol that the, the app, um, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, would be happy about this anyway. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, when I started out, I basically wanted to have these things, um, I wanted, like, if I exchange content between devices, um, regardless if it's my own or the, someone else, um, you want the content to be like it should be confidential. So um, users should not be able, or the server should, anyone in the middle, um, for, like the server should not be able to see uh, the content. Should be authentic, so I can verify that um, um, that this message actually came from um, this participant. Um, it should support larger groups. Um, uh, it should have backwards, uh, backward secrecy and forward secrecy. Um, so basically, if you're if someone cracks, um, cracks the current session, like in the future, you should not be able to, to read future messages. Uh, and also, if you crack the session, uh, the current session or the current message, like you should not be able to see um, uh, messages in the decrypt messages from the past. And of course, um, I mean, I'm, I'm a software developer with like a product focus since, since over 10 years. And, and I think what makes a good product is like good user experience with the context. Um, so my context was I want to build a good um, app for like foremost document sharing and yeah, secondary data. Um, so like this, this UX part was, was a goal. And we started very, very simple. Like, I mean, this was the first thing, like what, what if I just use a, a, synchronous, a symmetric key algorithm, like AES, so if you go fancy cha cha 20 or salsa 20 um, stream cipher, um, yeah, you get, you get a lot of the, the, the check boxes already. It's confidential. If you use, for example, GCM mode, uh, you can ensure it's, it's, it's authentic. Um, you can support larger groups. I mean, just share the key and and um, and then thousands of people can decrypt it. But you have the problem. It's not backward. Um, there's no backward secrecy because if you have like one key, then yeah, you have, you have the problem that, that can decrypt the whole session over time. And multiple messages, forward secrecy is the same thing. Um, so you 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 think about like well you could do key exchange uh, or uh, key rotation or how do you do key exchange? It all bears a lot of like UX questions. And then you, I mean, basically when you start out here, you you start to think about like um, uh, okay, how could I do this? How do I come up with this? Uh, use the different crypto uh, tools that I have available to to actually make this happen. And then you basically start to roll your own crypto. But what you hear from every cryptographer um, is don't roll your own crypto, uh, which is um, <laughs> it's a funny way of like making sure you keep your job. Um, and and uh, um, but in the end, like seriously, don't do it. Um, it's, it's, it's literally like it's crazy. I mean, it, just if you're curious, read this book, Crypto101.io. Um, um, it's from, from, I forgot his full name on Twitter, it's LVH. Um, uh, so it's this book about 
uh, gives an introduction from like zero. So if you're a software developer and if no idea about crypto, um, read this. Um, and you, this is like a really good intro uh, into the whole topic. And uh, it's like, it's literally crazy. Like what kind of methods exist to break um, different kinds of encryption is, is like, yeah, I, I was I was stunned um, with, with some of the examples in, in the book. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, um, very interesting. Uh, so if you don't want to roll your own crypto, but you want to um, get this up and running, um, well, what can you do? Well, learn from the best. Uh, at least this was, was what I was doing back then. And so we looked up to Signal because they got a lot of it right. Um, they have all these features, backward secrecy, forward secrecy. Um, they have good UX. And uh, yeah, if we check, if we look for the goals, like, yeah, it's confidential, authentic, um, backward secrecy, forward secrecy, UX, it's all there. I mean, Signal has good UX and, and um, can can match uh, the experience of all other messages nowadays or almost. And the only thing like that, that is a little bit trickier signal is, is like larger groups. Um, so they only support up to thousand members. I mean, this is pretty, pretty large group. Um, so it's a relative definition, um, but yeah. Um, the only like what I found tricky is there's almost no documentation. Um, well, they, they, they talk a lot about there's, there's papers and this is fantastic, but like about the actual implementation, um, you don't find too much. There's, there's no guide how to, um, how to do it yourself and so on and how to use the libraries. <clears throat> um, but there's another contender, um, Element Chat, um, especially with the Matrix protocol under the, under the hood. And if you look at this, um, it also checks a lot of the boxes. Um, there's a little bit of, and it's very well documented. Um, the, it supports larger groups, but um, you basically lose some form of backward secrecy and forward secrecy because you, you have sessions that um, are established um, with, with one key and you, you basically rotate the session in, in matrix the last time I checked it was every 100 messages um, so basically if someone decrypts manages to crack a message they could go back a certain amount of messages or go keep on reading the next upcoming messages until the session rotates again um, yeah uh, trade-offs life is full of trade-offs it's a pity um, one problem though uh, that basically both had, um, they're really optimized to send messages. Um, so it's like, if I send you five messages, the, the, the whole protocol is optimized or like uh, to fetch all of them. I, I'm not entirely sure about metrics anymore. Like maybe I, I misunderstood it one and a half years ago. It could be that you can skip messages, but uh, yeah, I went down the path anyway. Um, maybe it was pity, but yeah. Um, um, yeah, and the other, other thing that I, I found very tricky is like you really have to buy into the whole ecosystem, like or you re-implement everything. Like like um, the whole server code is written in Python. I haven't touched Python for five six years, um, so hosting I, I don't know it was tricky. So what I did is I went one level deeper, and this is basically where I, where I started designing my own protocol um, because there is this protocol all Mac on that the matrix protocol uses and yeah you can, it's all open source uh, it's MIT licensed uh, fantastic and you um, you find it on gitlab.matrix.org and yeah I started to go into this rabbit hole uh, because I felt like yeah I need to learn about it I, I, I didn't feel comfortable with some of the, the technology and and felt like if I I mean after all it was also a hobby like uh, I felt like if I if I go deeper and get an understanding, I have, I have more control and, and can evolve this better long term. Um, but still, you don't want to roll your own crypto. So uh, basically, um, I just took this, um, read a lot about it, and then uh, checked out what Matrix, what Element does uh, to actually use all Mac OM and uh, try to do just what they do because they are really good at what they do. And it's like, I mean, 
millions of users using this and 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 a lot of developers actually challenge the, the the code and the ideas so and for example example also the the own mac own library um uh, 2016 uh, underwent uh, for um, an audit a crypto audit and and uh, some findings were fixed and so on and some were basically applied to, to the le code level above to like to make sure it's sound and and um it's secure and so I started to use the library and started to basically do what they do. Um, just write my own code around it, the, the whole server implementation and also on the, on the client. Um, and map things a little bit different. So a group chat basically becomes a document um, and a message becomes a document update. And one thing that was very crucial for the current protocol that I'm doing, but also for, for some future optimizations that I want to do, um, I want to be able to, um, th this goes uh, back into like state-based CRDTs and so on and so forth, um, but I wanted to be able to like only retrieve the last document update um, because what you can do with, with uh, you, you ne don't necessarily need to decrease retrieve all updates um, and then um, decrypt each of them, which could be very slow if there are a lot of them. Uh, but I wanted to be able to have like a snapshot based protocol where it's like some point the client can encrypt the whole document again, mark it as a snapshot and, um, and then send um, um, further updates and then can decide to make a snapshot again and so on. And to get control over this protocol, that, that was basically the main reason why, why I had, or maybe I didn't have to, but like um, I eventually went one level deeper. And um, yeah, so that brought me to, to um, okay, just do what they do. And then I started to, to, uh, to set this up and, and just try it out to like establish encryption from one entity to another. And if you look at um, all make all, the, the core entity where you encrypt from A to B is, is a device. Uh, in OLM itself, it's called as a OLM.account. But um, if you look at the matrix protocol, and I always wanted to like follow the lead because don't roll your own crypto, uh, which I'm kind of still doing. Um, yeah, um, but like at least I, I try to minimize the error that I make. Um, with this approach, that this was the idea behind it. Um, I just want to copy them. So um, let's create an OM account, which is a device. And in the end, what is it? It's just an ED uh, 25519 fingerprint key pair. And you don't actually have to do this. You just say create device, OM account create or something. I can't remember. It's like, um, we need to go into the code. Um, then it's a, another identity key pair, curve uh, 25519. Um, and you create a queue of on-time keys, um, which are also this curve 25519 key pairs. And uh, one thing that is not uh, necessarily part uh, of all, um, but uh, what, what, what Matrix is doing, and I wanted to do it as well to, to make sure um to be secure uh, i'm using on ios mac os and android i'm using the, the secure keychains key stores to make sure even if your device uh, if someone like, like even if you had an uh, um, um even if your device gets stolen and they, they can read out all the data from your your drive um uh, the keys, the private keys would be stored in a secure, I think it's called secure element or so, um, storage uh, on the device so that they, they, they have a really, really hard time uh, to actually get the keys out. And uh, so what do you do with these? Um, I'm not sure this is actually too helpful, but I at least wanted to show it one time. Um, uh, this is what I had to do, um, what, what I'm basically re-implementing and the part to, to make sure I can get from a device Alice to Bob and send, send data, um, in, in this case, actually from Bob to Alice. Um, 
and and yeah um I will briefly run through this. Um, there's a lot of stuff uh, happening under the hood. There's this double ratchet um, algorithm. So if you have an active session, there's this ratchet. Think about it as a ratchet that turns and and um, you're always creating uh, new key derivation functions. And and but to be honest, like I don't feel qualified to to really explain this. Like I, I mean, I read a lot about it, but but it's. Uh, uh, trying to explain it first of all would like would be a different talk and um i i am not sure i, I would actually get it 100 right uh, because don't roll your own crypto um I, i'm just relying on this i hope it's sound um, um but yeah there's there's a lot of indications that it is so if you want to like um if you want to to uh in, encrypt some data and, and get it from, from uh, Bob to Alice. The first thing what, what needs to happen before is, um, I talked about this one-time keys that, that a one-time key queue that, that a device needs to have. Um, you generate these one-time keys and you have to publish them somewhere. I mean, in the end, like it doesn't need a server, but you need uh, Bob to get this one-time key from Alice somehow and a server seems fine. Um, in this case, so Bob can actually retrieve this one-time key. And with this one-time key, you can create an own session and a make own session. So um, the make own session is this group thing. So, so the own session is basically what, what the signal protocol does is like one-to-one um, -one, uh, device to device um, session. Uh, and this make own session is a, is a invention of, of matrix on top of it. Um, and it basically is like one uh, you encrypt it once and you can uh, you just send the keys via an own session to everybody and you lose that's why you lose some of the the backward and forward secrecy because if you just use own uh, you basically could resemble what what uh, signal is doing and the signal protocol is doing but they, they wanted to um to have this thing on top that you you Basically, yeah, for, for, for performance reasons. And um, um, yeah, it, it's just a matter of trade offs. So you create this make on session, you encrypt uh, the group message or, or uh, document update. Then you um, use the one time key, create an own session, and um, you encrypt the uh, session details of the make on session. So you basically through all you're making, you, you're encrypting the, 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 um, the session key of the make on session and send it, send both their own uh, message and the make on, um, they, both of them are encrypted, send them to the server and then Alice can retrieve both of them and can decrypt the, the first of all, there's a lot of verification to be done um uh before and after you decrypt um but yeah again just copy what matrix do um basically reverse engineered and there's also like a lot of good documentation and guides uh, because for them it's a protocol um that they would like people to use so so you can learn a lot from it um uh, you verify decrypt your own session with this you get the make own session key um you again verify the message index and so on and so forth and then decrypt the make on session and you suddenly like end-to-end -end encrypted like without the server ever knowing any of the content you got uh, the message from a to b and you can um, use the session you should rotate the make on session i in my case to to be like really on a safe side uh, also rotate the own session regularly um and well, be on the safe side. It's more like a self-healing system because yeah, sometimes there could be weird errors, uh, you know, network errors, and then some message gets doesn't get sent, and I could get up in a weird uh, state. Um, especially if you do offline first, everything is like gets a bit more complicated. Um, so I rotate just to to have this self-healing property. Uh, but in the end, like um, you have um something really cool because you can end-to-end -end encrypt uh between devices and you can send messages document updates and and because I, I can control the server part and like what is like 
how if this is marked as a snapshot or, or just an update and so on, um, I can actually have full control over um, uh, the protocol. And yeah, that, that was that was like once this was done, I was very I was very excited because uh, I had any end to end encryption between two devices. Fantastic. And then what you can do is uh, you can add a third device and you. Um, you, you basically create this open session between all of them. And, and this is finally, this is how also the matrix protocol scales. And with Mac OM, you can, you can avoid a lot of the work uh, as again, um, with, with um, losing some of the backward and forward secrecy um, capabilities um, or like features, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, and that's fantastic. There is one problem though, like what, like if I'm, how do you deal with devices? I mean, we have this concept of devices, but the device usually belongs to a user. And so what if Alice owns two devices? You still want to enter and encrypt between those. Um, Bob owns only one device. Like this is, if you think about your ex, um, I have an account. And this is how, how people think about it. And like, it, it makes sense. I, I have an account and I wanna like, let's say um, if, if uh, you and I share a note, I don't want that like, whenever I create a new device, you suddenly have to add this new device. This is like the UX would be terrible. So we have this problem that we need to verify that, uh, a device X belongs to the user Y, and basically all of these devices uh, um, belong to this user. And, and uh, now, once I realize this, so like, you, you basically like go from one uh, one step and another, and you run into problems. And and this is this was the next problem. And, and then I thought about like, okay, what what what's the toolbox? What what can I actually use um, to make this happen? And um, basically, the two things. That I, that I was capable to do back then is like use encryption and sign things. Um, encryption is awesome because you, you can, um, the, the data is hidden with signing things. You have, um, you create metadata. Um, that's a big, it's kind of, it is an issue because metadata can tell a lot about it. Um, this was my, my first thought back then. It's like, how do I do this? Uh, with encryption, could uh, you basically need to tell everyone again, like, hey, there's a new device. They need to store it. Uh, removal. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Maybe, maybe that. Uh, yeah, you know, it's still evolving. <laughs> um, but again, don't roll your own crypto. So I felt like. Okay, wait a minute. How do they actually do it? And I, I checked out Matrix, and there's this there's this beautiful RFC, um, basically explaining how they do it um, and how it was implemented with cross signing. And so, bas yeah, basically what I what I just mentioned is like you you want to make sure that uh, um, that the device X belongs to user Y, and yeah. Just do it. So they do yeah, they have this really uh, proposal and, and they do it a bit more. It's I'm not doing exactly the same because I'm doing something simpler. Um, this was a this was really like a step away from it because they have like uh, users. They have the the concept of a user uh, user key. And then they have this master key and the master key signs the user key and, and then devices and so on. And, and uh, like, it has some reasons, but it would be really like uh, tricky to go all into that. And like, I'm also not sure if, yeah, basically my opinion, and maybe if this is a problem um, or it might turn out to be a problem, I felt like, it can be simpler, at least this is what I'm doing. So what did I do? I mean, basically very similar to them. I just leverage um, um, public uh, private key signature. Um, this is uh, fingerprinting um, um, uh, cryptography. And the good part is 
uh, yeah, because they do it, they also included it in, in the all Mac only. Um, so you can create private keys, um, the exposed API for that, and, and you can uh, sign things, uh, sign messages, and you can verify messages. And um, to double check, I also like <clears throat> went into like, is someone else doing this, using this? And yeah, you can find Salt doing it, Monero, and so on and so forth. And so I decided to go with that. Um, so I'm going to use the tool signing to make sure uh, that, uh, that I can prove that a device belongs to a user and verify it. And again, this is stored in the, the iOS keychain and the Android key store to make sure the private keys are um, really, really hard to, to, um, to retrieve um, if anything happens. There's one problem about this design and uh, in the end, Matrix has, has, has the same issue. Uh, like as far as I know, yeah. Um, in the end, you have like at least one key that you have to share between several devices. We can uh, secure it with a password, uh, possibly. But then you have passwords again, and yeah, I don't know. Uh, I try to avoid pass, but I'm still trying to avoid passwords as long as possible. Uh, um, eventually, probably have to go there for some backups and whatnot. But yeah, so far. Um, uh, managed to do without. Uh, so you you share this private key across multiple devices. So if one device really gets breached, um, you actually could should throw away your um, um, your whole account and re should re-verify for everyone. But we're getting to that. Um, there's there's like already set it up in a way that the um, like I haven't done this yet, uh, but I'm, I'm thinking about like it could be multiple user. Uh, private public key pairs and then um, basically if you have three devices, um, multiple devices could share them and then you could basically um, um, basically like uh, tell, uh, tell your all your uh, contacts um, this device was breached so suddenly this user public uh, private public key pair is not valid anymore and you could still continue with the others. Um, this comes in hand in hand with like rotating the keys and, and the backend and, and protocol is a little bit prepared for that, but it's, it's not doing it yet. And, uh, okay. It was already very, very deep into, uh, to the rabbit hole, but let's get actually like, how, how can you do this? Um, so you create a message and it contains, uh, the, with a device, we, we remember there's like these two re very relevant keys that, that, that are uh, persistent per device. This is this um, signing key and the, the device ID key. And if you put them both into a message um, and sign it with the user key, you could basically um, prove that um, this device belongs to this uh, user public private public key pair, and, and that's fantastic. I, I mentioned that I prepared the protocol already for like rotating uh, user signing keys. So I'm, I'm already including the user signing key. So you basically can know which signing key signed it to make sure you can, um, yeah, you have basically backups of, of this verification and, and you can um, prove for multiple um, multiple keys that, that this device belongs to, um, to a user. And yeah, as already said, you, you just put the message um, into a function, um, put the signature there, you put the public uh, key there of the user and you can verify, oh yes, uh, all of the content in the message was actually signed by this key and therefore must be, uh, uh, it's uh, authentic. And that's really, really great. Um, one, I mean, I'm going, uh, maybe this is way out of context. There's like the hard part is in, in a distributed system like that. Uh, once you basically prove that something is valid, like it's really, really hard to make it invalid. I mean, you have this with certificates and so on. And, and nowadays this is basically like, uh, like one way of doing it is just with like, um, um, if you limit the time frame, so so you can make sure that verifications run out, um, or you 
you trust the server, which is something I want to avoid in end-to-end -end encrypted um, system as, as much as possible. So you, you, you trust the server to actually remove access and tell everyone, hey, um, this was revoked. Um, yeah. Um, maybe there are better things with serial knowledge proof and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. Uh, still evolving and learning. So nice. Now we can basically um, verify that the device belongs to a user. We can, let me, uh, the, where is the mouse? Uh, can't find it. Um, it's here. Anyway, oh no. Um, um, yeah, you, 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 you can prove that certain devices belong to a certain user. And that's great, um, which brings up immediately the next problem that you run into. Um, how do you verify that this public key, this signing key, uh, this, this key used for, for signing um, the devices is actually the other user? What if you, um, I'm as Alice, uh, want to communicate with Bob, we want to share um, um, we want to collaborate on a, on a document or like in, in, in the element chat, for example, um, when I have a group session and we, we share messages, how, how can I verify that this actually is Bob and the other person? And it's very interesting because this is the part where most systems nowadays, um, basically you trust the server. So in, in the case of Signal, um, if I understand correctly, I mean, I said, um, uh, correct me um, if I'm wrong, but you, you're basically relying that you that signal verifies the phone number for you. And then um, there's this very fancy system. It's really, really cool um, to like basically check um, uh, your contact list without signal level knowing your contact list um uh, to get all the other contacts and and basically you you trust the server like that signal verified that this phone number is authentic and and you you trust server and and for for element uh, as far as understood is um you also have this idea of um uh, yeah it's just like you trust the server and then then you have the this or this element matrix id and this server plus name and um they do something so you can verify users or, or, or just devices. I'm, I'm not sure at the moment. Um, but then you get shield, which tells you like this is verified. So it's like a nice way from the UI UX to like possibly encourage people to to um, to how to say to like uh, to do the verification and really like. Um, remove some some trust to the server and yeah there, there are other systems like keybase where you verify from multiple devices uh are multiple services and but in the end you still uh, trust keybase um uh, to be honest who is this user and and so on and so forth and um yeah but well maybe maybe it's like i'm trying to do too much um but I had this idea of like when building the system, like one does not simply trust the server. I really wanna, um, uh, yeah, I, I just follow like had this ambition is like, can I can I make it in a way that 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 at no point that the server can actually um, play a man in the middle um, attack and um so while it's a pain for the ux i decided to go for a verification process i hope that in the future i can simplify this remove this or like i, I don't know yet um well yeah it's just like it's it's step by step um so i i created this process um and this is this is the um this is the part where i'm completely diverging from from matrix uh, at this point so is quite interesting because, um, yeah, really only by going this one level deeper and not using the matrix protocol, I could, 
well, I probably could build this on top of metrics. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's other problems um, um, to, um, yeah, I wanted to, to reduce the tech vector and, and build this contact adding uh, flow. And this is how it looks like. So here on the right side, you can see user signing up. Um, yeah, it's that fast. Uh, you just create the keys. And I'm creating a contact invitation. I'm typing in, I know the other person I want to send the invitation to is Anna. Um, and here comes the part. I'm creating this invitation code, which um, contains mostly um, just public data and then some verification. Um, at no point there's anything in there which is really sensible. Um, uh, yeah. Um, um, and basically, by you just create this code, uh, you send it to the other person, can be uh, like, it shouldn't be a channel where a man in the middle attack uh, would be possible, where it's like basically everywhere nowadays, that, that's the sad part. That's the big attack vector still of this, this approach. Um, but um, uh, yeah, it, even if this, this invitation code expo gets exposed a year later, it shouldn't be a problem. And um, um, yeah, and you basically, I try to make it as simple as possible. And uh, I will run you quickly through this process um, to show you how, how um, I did it and, and hopefully it's, it's sound and secure. Um, so first of all, like when you want to add a contact, um, creating this invitation code and it also creates a version, uh, it includes a version which I didn't uh, add here for simplicity. Um, um, yeah, but basically the invitation code includes a user ID, uh, the, the, the uh, user signing key of the user, um, a user signing key. Uh, it creates something, and I, I think the, the, the naming is very, it's probably wrong, but anyway, let's just follow through with it. It's called server secret and the second one, um, um, second like randomly generated uh, um, um, string, which is the, the client secret. And then what happens is, um, and I really would love to have the mouse here. Why, where is it? Uh, it's there somewhere. Here, it's not on the right side. It doesn't show up, no, what a pity. So let's go from top left generate the invitation. Then um, we basically tell the server with uh, um, a create contact invitation uh, API call. Um, hey, I wanna, I'm wanna. i creating this new invitation. I expect someone to, to accept it. And the only thing that we sent there is the server secret. Uh, so it's basically um, server secret is, is meant in a way here is like, Whoever has this uh, secret is is basically I sent them the uh, the, the um, this should match to the name that I just entered, and this is yeah if someone could get access to that this is the man in the middle attack that could happen. Um, um, uh, if someone gets this server secret, they could basically accept it instead of the other person, um, which if the other person accepts, um, they can't anymore. Um, so it should show a red flag, it's like, hey, uh, why can't I accept this invitation? And it should be, uh, actually, in terms of UX, you could, you could uh, show a big red flag that like someone tries to, um, tries to accept the invitation twice and, and you hopefully, yeah, could be possible to solve it with UX. And you, at the same time, so you, you create this invitation on the server, um, you send the invitation via uh, this other channel to, uh, from Alice to Bob. So it can be, I don't know, you send it to a signal or SMS or whatever. Um, and this invitation, the, the invitation code um, includes a client secret, server secret, the user ID, um, and this user public key um, for, for signing. Uh, the server secret is basically there to like do the next thing. Um, ask for all of the devices. So the idea is that you basically like, once Bob got this invitation, um, he can prove like, I have the server secret and I wanna accept this invitation and to not like make Bob send back 
all his data to Ellis, he can actually use the existing data that he has to just encrypt, um, uh, create own sessions and send the, all of his data um, to, uh, to the server as an encrypted message. And then Alice can fetch and you can basically leverage the, the fact that both, both are already communicating to the same server to, um, um, to, um, to automatically like accept from both sides because this is what you want um, and, and establish this key exchange. Because so far only Alice sent the, the user public key to Bob and you know, this is the big goal. And now we wanna make sure that Bob actually also gets his uh, public user uh, signing key in a secure way to Alice. And this is done through an encrypted message then. Uh, so it could have been done with like, hey, send me, I send you your invitation code and then you send me one that is like, I just wanted to reduce it as much as possible. And like, we have the tool encryption so we can just send it back. And yeah, uh, basically Bob then um, um, with the server secret can prove, hey, I know about this invitation. Give me all the public device uh, keys for, uh, for, the, for the other user. Um, and um, yeah, then Bob can encrypt this message, can basically uh, tell the server, hey, I'm accepting this invitation. And there's, there's an error now uh, missing on the left part where Alice basically regularly checks, is there an accepted in the, uh, invitation? And if yes, it's fantastic because um, she can decrypt this um, uh, message from, from Bob on one of her devices. And there's one part that is very important here. Um, at no point the server knows about the client secret. So uh, the server can't do a man in the middle attack and uh, screw with, with Alice and Bob because uh, Alice is the Alice and Bob. Um, um, if uh, if nobody intercepted the the, the the transfer from Alice to Bob, um, are the only one who know about the, the client secret and the, uh, the client secret yes. So you can verify this is fine, and then you can complete the contact invitation, and um, you basically still send. Uh, actually, the error should go in the other part. I think I have an outdated version of this. Uh, flow that's why it's missing but anyway um so they are yeah i don't know i i hope this is still useful but basically um it's 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 really nice what you can do with encryption and, and signing because you can uh, simplify the flow and 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 um what you can do then is exactly go to this point where um suddenly you verified um, with this contact edit flow, you didn't need, you don't trust the server to make sure who the other person is and you verify the front and then you can exchange content. And this makes it really nice because as long as nobody has a, um, has a, a device that has been preached, um, uh, you can be absolutely certain that only you and the other participant or like three, four other people, whoever, how many uh, collaborators you wanna add, um, you're the only ones um, um, uh, communicating with each other. There's another thing, like right now, you basically only accept uh, content uh, from uh, users that you added. So that means like if, if um, three people collaborating and two of them don't know each other, um, you basically have to wait until the other person gets the content update and re-encrypts it and uh, then you get it. Uh, but also this is solvable with cross-signing because I can make sure that um, on, a no, on a document, a user can uh, basically say like, hey, this is the other participant and you can trust this participant. Um, again, this brings up removal, um, like removing a collaborator from a document, uh, you have to trust the server and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, possibly this is, like, I mean, Signal is doing this with zero net knowledge proofs to like prove who belongs to a group. Um, that would be cool. Uh, like I, I simply have to learn a lot more about it before uh, really, really doing it. So far, I'm, I'm using this um, this tool signing to to make sure um, uh, I can trust. Yeah, uh, and this is 
almost the end. Um, and this is, this is, I mean, I just mentioned the, the way of like cross signing, how you can leverage this to, to, um, to basically make the whole thing sound or like make it secure and, and, and there's end to end encryption and no trust to the server. Need, well, still the server needs to relay the messages. If, if it's the server just doesn't send the messages, well, yeah, uh, you don't get them, but it, but at least you, you you can make sure it's it's never um, intercepted and and read. And I'm using like maybe I'm overdoing this, but maybe there's a problem with this. I, I I really don't think so, and I hope not. But I'm I'm also using this for server authentication. So for example, I mean I have the device um, public key. So I can just send an authorization header with the uh, date time string um, and the signature of the date time string and, and uh, the public key included. Uh, so this is the message content. And basically can verify that this um, auth can authenticate the, the uh, when I'm doing an API request that this is uh, coming from this device. And um, why the date time? Because, I mean, it's completely artificial at the moment. I'm, I'm basically um, having a, uh, the API request, um, the, the clocks need to be synchronized. If the API request is without a 10 minute time frame, then, um, and this is basically verified by the signature, um, the, the, um, I don't trust it anymore. So the server rejects the message and says like, hey, um, yeah, nice that you signed it, and, and this is um, this is valid. But um, the date the range um, um, is is out of sync, and this is basically like um, from the server side, like this is uh, like yeah, the session expires within within a 10, 10 minute time frame. Um, yeah, signing is is really really a nice tool to like <laughs> um, verify things, and. Yeah, um, this brings me to the end, uh, which also means like this, for me, this is just the beginning. Like uh, I started this uh, one and a half, one years ago um, um, as a hobby and now really, really trying to focus on it and, and, and um, build a larger document editor um, to um, basically like my, my dream would be like an office suit that is end-to-end -end encrypted um, and possibly a lot more. I think we, we could do so much more. Um, there are a lot of problems. Uh, I mean, this would be another talk, all the current issues that I have. But if you're curious, like just reach out. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to talk about these things. I'm happy to exchange. I mean, every time I, I speak to someone that, that really challenges my idea, I learn so much and it's like it's evolving um, and it's, it's, it's great. Um, so feedback is very much appreciated and, and happy to talk with like-minded people and yeah if you want to know more as I already mentioned reach out nick at serenity.re i'm using proto mail if if um for that url not uh for this email not for um others of mine but um um so so if that that helps you uh, all of this is a like or there's even a, like a deeper technical documentation about the protocol on 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 the first uh, url everything is open source all the client code all the backend um, if you want to look into it, um, uh, feel free to do so. And yeah, I hope this was interesting. And um, thank you very much for listening and, and open to questions now. Perfect. Thank you very much. Nick, cool presentation, cool talk, cool tool. Um, and I'm looking really forward to what's going to happen in the future. Awesome. Perfect. Um, so we got uh, a few questions. We also got something in the chat. Um, I would say, should we just grab the chat or do you want us just yeah. dive into the Q&A? Uh, either way, what's the difference? in? Uh, like, I think the, in the chat, there was more like a, a feature, a feature um, idea, like an option to invite users via QR code would be great in app scanning feature. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, are there a way to verify that the device signing key was exchanged correctly without a man in the middle over the channel? So like with the verify feature over Q uh, QR code scanning in Signal. Yes, um, David, absolutely agree. 
um, uh, it's on the roadmap. Um, just don't know when it will happen, but yeah, uh, makes a lot of sense. I even thought about like this shield thingy, like with what Matrix is doing. It could be like a light green or, or like grayish green for like you, you verify the contact via, um, via copy and paste. But if you do the QR code, you get the extra green shield and you could even encourage people to do that. But like in a remote world, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. This is, there's a lot of like um, UX implications. Like, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Um, yeah. Um, but definitely QR codes is, is like, should be one. Also like right now, this is like um, um, uh, cool. I need to into, look into, I, I know about Freema, but I, 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 I haven't used it. So uh, I need to check how, how this is done with, with them. Um, yeah, because just uh, Stefan mentioned that, that Freema also shows the manual verification starts better than Signal. Um, uh, what what they wanted to say, uh, yeah, forgot about it. <laughs> um, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> so let's head up over to the questions. Or did we answer actually the question of David? Uh, if uh, is there a way to verify that the device signing key was exchanged correctly with other man in the middle, over the other channel? So like with the verify feature over QR code scanning and signal. Uh, oh. Um, no, not yet. Uh, it's definitely um, on the list, but um, yeah. Well, what you could do, yeah, I'm exposing um, in the app um, from every user, you can see the public keys. Um, so we could basically uh, uh, check that our public, uh, like uh, if I'm standing next to you, um, I could open for your user the, the public key um, and I could open my device in the settings. This is my user public key and we could just compare this. So yes, you could do it, but it should be really like an, a feature that people can understand. But right now it's like a lot of gibberish and, and, and uh, it's just a gibberish string, um, but it should be like really numbers and, and designed in a way that you can pass it, uh, um, um, pass it nice and walk through it or some kind of way of like doing this better and QR codes. Uh, for sure, to make a lot more sense. Um, also to verify. Yeah. So I think if uh, if the question is not perfectly answered for you, David, then you can still write in the chat or you can also raise your hand. But I think uh, so far, uh, it would be it. So the next question would be from Stefan Kröner. Uh, what happens if you lose your only device? Can you retrieve your password encrypted private key from the server or do you create a new one? Uh, good question. Right now, it's lost. Um, so, so this is a this is a problem. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking or I thought a lot about this. Um, um, so, one for once, basically, as soon as people start really using the app, um, I'm, I'm, I haven't done this, but uh, this is like on my list. Uh, I want to show them a message that, like you should really connect another device. Um, so that, that makes it uh, basically your other device becomes the backend. And because it's, everything is offline first, um, basically on both devices, you have the full, uh, full data set. If you share with others, they also have it. Um, this helps a lot. Um, so it, also in terms of organization features, um, if you have everyone in your organization has access to, to a lot of your data, then yeah, it's, it's very unlikely that you lose all of it. But I'm also thinking about like um, backup, um, backup schemes, backup ideas. Um, so uh, there could be like, for example, uh, on mobile, uh, you could uh, take all the content and encrypt it and put it uh, with a password protected um, encryption on your iCloud. Um, this could be done on the iOS client. There's also like on G Drive, you could do the same. You want to make sure it's encrypted because if it's on iCloud, I mean, the, the whole, if it's unencrypted on iCloud, the whole purpose is, is gone. And it's like, you want to protect the users from you from not knowing what, what's wrong. I mean, the, the, the craziest thing is like, um, uh, um, I got backups. Actually, this is affecting me right now because yeah, um, yeah, we go. But if you do an iCloud backup of an iPhone, it's unencrypted. Uh, they could read it. It's yeah, scary. Um, and th th this is this. 
actually is the thing that I, I want to rather fix soon because right now the nodes are unencrypted on your device and um, yeah. So don't do iCloud backups if you really care about security. I mean, all of the other content is, is you, you can make sure that um, when you actually use um, the secure store, you can make sure it's not included in, in an iCloud backup and you probably, I don't know if you can do this for, for other data, SQLite uh, data entries. Yeah, uh, need to look into it. But, but then it's also like, it's a lot about expectation management. It's like someone backs up the device and then all of their documents are gone. They're like, Ugh. Um, so uh, one thing that I'm thinking about is like, basically um, um, have everything in a SQLite database locally on the device offline um, and uh, encrypt this uh, database um, um, with a key that is then stored in the iCloud uh, secure storage, which Apple should not be able to access and uh, or, um, Android and so on. So th there's like ways of doing it. And yeah. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, paper key device yes. uh, sounds like a good idea. Paper, no. Um, something else. Yes. Paper, not because of the one-time keys. You need to rotate them, rotate them. And, and this is the mega pain point. I mean, you could have a paper key. So you, you could create, what, what I haven't told you yet is there are one-time keys and there's like one folder. Well, you can have multiple folder keys, um, but usually, and you want to rotate them also from time to time, but it's like basically if a device runs out of one-time keys that are published, uh, there's like one folder key that is used to like still op, uh, create an own session. And, so you could create the device um, uh, with um, with like the the, the two um, the fingerprinting key the, the ID key and then one fallback key. The only problem is that basically this becomes your weakest link in terms of security because if somebody cracks this um, a, a, an old session with with the um, with this fallback key, um, if I understood correctly, forward backward secrecy is gone. And yeah. Um, so what I was thinking is like, you could still have a like backup device that is password encrypted. Um, and yes, you can store it again in a secure element. So we a keychain and whatnot. And basically like uh, one or multiple devices could, um, rotate the one-time keys and um, yeah, then you would have something that is password protected that you at least could restore from um, uh, with a password and then this encrypted, but then this encrypted uh, device backup, so basically just a series of keys um, could be stored on, I don't know, uh, your iCloud encrypted with the password um, or it could even be on a Serenity um, server and you just need to um, decrypt the keys with a password and um, yeah, then you could again, it's, so it's kind of backup strategy. There's so much uh, and it is so, it's unclear what, um, yeah, there's yes. any good ideas. <laughs> yeah, I would say let's move on. I hope this is yeah. good. <laughs> Uh, uh, the next question would be also from Stefan Grüner would be regarding the user in, uh, innovation flow. If the server is a bad actor, he can do uh, MITM and accept the in invitation from Alice with a fake user and will never send the invitation to Bob, but instead send his own or can this, can this, detected by, can this be detected by the client? If the server is a bad actor, he can do uh, an accept invitation from Alice. That's not possible um, because Alice is checking with this client secret um, the, if this is correct. And this client secret gets, um, uh, gets sent over this other channel. And I mean, yeah, because if, if Alice and Bob have no contacts or, or whatsoever at the moment um, in, in Serenity, um 
uh, this client secret there is sent on another channel and so this should prevent the man in the middle attack um, and yeah it's verified so this should be detected um, if you have an idea or if it's broken or I did something wrong let's talk about it because I, I want to know <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, from Martin, from Martin, awesome presentation. Thanks again. Uh, either I missed it or did not mention. How about web support? Signal is lacking it uh, for reason, of course, lack of secure storage and so on. Do you have any plans on this? Yeah. Um, uh, hey, Martin. Um, but we should chat again. Uh, haven't seen you in a long time. Um, uh, so far, I basically did what what Signal or like yeah, Signal did only only use uh, desktop and mobile clients to to have access to such a secure storage. Um, exactly for that reason, and web client, I was thinking um, uh, would be possible if you basically do what I thought about this backup device. Um, uh, uh, maybe to compare it, um, you you can do what ProtoMail does. So um, with ProtoMail, um, you have this, uh, you have your your password. Uh, so so they store a password encrypted version of your private keys on the server, and whenever you um, with your I think it's a, with your user ID, your email or whatever you. Um, basically retrieving this private encrypted um, 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 uh, keys and then with your password locally you decrypt it and then you suddenly have the private keys on your local device uh, so and this is this is how you do login in protomail and then suddenly you, you have the device locally here um, I wouldn't only use it in a session store or like at best at RAM uh, memory. So like, you know, uh, JavaScript variable or whatever, um, and never put into local storage because yeah, then this is a complete insecure storage. So basically once the browser closes, the sessions should be gone and the private keys should not be persisted. Um, um, uh, yeah, or maybe you can leave the choice UX is uh, interesting. You wanna, you don't want to log in every time, yeah. Uh, tricky question, um, but um, that would be the idea. So like basically, you like use the remote server as a secure storage, and this, but the um, um, yeah, and you need a password, or maybe you can even do like this. This uh, can you access the fingerprint or like uh, um, um, Face, face ID scan through the web, maybe then it could work. I haven't looked too much into it, but basically this would be a concept to, to um, um, yeah, use the service. So it's possible, it's just more work. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And should we go to the next one? But now you're muted, can't you? <laughs> no, sorry. Just just pick one which you which you like the most. Actually. Um, uh, which one? Uh, this was the web client. Yes. Um, how big can groups be? How many devices? If you haven't benchmarked it, what do you think will changing a document become very slow at one point because the change has to be encrypted so many devices? Um, yes and no. We well, yeah. It's, it's, um, right now, it's not that efficient because I'm uh, I'm constantly creating new home sessions. Ideally, uh, like it shouldn't be a problem to reuse because it's anyway this double ratchet thing, uh, a double, double ratchet um, 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 cryptography algorithm. Um, um, so you could just reuse and uh, one established own session um, to another another device and and just update the um, yeah. But still, you 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 basically. If, if a group has 10,000 users, you you need to encrypt it uh, 10,000 times the, the session key. And the next time you rotate, um, it would do it. Because everything is, in my case, at least offline first, um, that might take longer and you wouldn't notice it. So it might be fine. So in theory, this could go very high. And I'm actually surprised because I've thought Signal, because they, I mean, they're creating, um, yeah, they're doing this basically on every message. 
Uh, and if you say it works for thousand um, people, I, I would think that for Matrix, it works for um, a lot more. I have no idea about the numbers, maybe 10K, maybe something, I don't know. Uh, have it, definitely haven't benchmarked it. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the limit for WhatsApp, for example, is 256, 54, I don't know. Um, and for Signal, it's now 1,000. Um, so I'm actually surprised that, that yeah, I, I would say at least 1,000. Um, yeah. Um, next one. Yes. Uh, do I have to share each document individually or can I have something like a work group, which is automatically assessed as some folders of notes? Um, right now it's individually. Um, next up, um, I, I want to do this workspaces um, and basically leverage cross signing uh, to, uh, to yeah, say like, or give people access to like one work group and then you can um, automatically have um, access to multiple documents, but you could still add one person to only one document if you really want to. And yeah, so it's in the making. Um, where is the server located was a question in the chat. Um, uh, the server is located in Europe, uh, Frankfurt, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's... Um, uh, this is probably the the uh, the thing we have to. Um, I don't feel the the uh, most comfortable, but it's a Heroku just for simplicity of it. So it's a Heroku Postgres, which in the end means like AWS. I think still um, Heroku is probably still on top of AWS, um, but at least it's in Europe. And um, yeah, I, I, for example, also the URL is um, so the API is serenity.re. I, I really wanted to have basically the, the, the everything in Europe. Um, so Dota re domains are um, managed by the, the, this French um, NIC version um, uh, because uh, Reunion Islands also um, um, are belong uh, to France and they, they, they met, well, I, I actually don't know. Um, not that I'm seeing something wrong here, but uh, I wanted to have everything in under European um, um, control because yeah, the thing is, it's end-to-end -end encrypted, which is really cool. But I'm um, yeah, I still uh, uh, want to have. The, there's still right now. There's a, still a lot of metadata. And um, that at least I want to have in Europe. And also like for, for in terms of like what people I think of like organizations when I, when I really scale this out, like um, I'm focusing in the beginning probably more on, on European um, customers and um, yeah. Um, you should add, should add support, uh, to our support. Oh yeah, that, that would be very interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, there were so many ideas. And Matrix even like they, they thought about like moving the server on the client and then just route for Tor because they have the problem in a federated system. You, you can't remove metadata. Um, there's this talk on FOSTEM from 2018 where, where um, oh, I forgot his name. Um, um, the, the CTO of Matrix um, uh, talked about it. they can't remove certain metadata, but they are but just routing through Tor and, and moving the Matthew. Yes, thank you. Um, really nice guy. I spoke to him once. I uh, like chat with him now and then. But like, um, um, yeah, if, if you do this, you, you could basically um, uh, remove the metadata that servers know. And, and yeah, this. Uh, Different approaches to, to, to the same problems. Very, uh, very interesting. Um, uh, uh, let's go to, can you unsign or kick out the other person of the docker with some one of the par partners who agree on adding to his lost the device? Yes, you can. Um, right, you can basically remove. So right now, um, only the creator of a document can um, can add collaborators and remove them. In the end, like with cross signing, you could give other people the um, uh, the ability to do that as well. It's, it's just a trust thing again. Um, and um, 
So yes, you can do that. You can remove a, a collaborator, which basically, but right now, and I'm thinking about this problem a lot, but um, right now it's basically just telling the server like, hey, tell everyone that this user is not allowed to access it anymore. Even like in theory, like there's still a valid signature that you just remove from the database. Um, and from then on, um, if uh, on every, uh, when, when I wanna create an update for a document and basically asking like, what are all the up-to-date devices for this node? I, I verify the users, I ver um, verify all the devices and um, with the signatures and, and yeah, if the server just doesn't send the device and the signature, um, uh, the, the other user, uh, this user would not receive any updates anymore. Um, so yes, you can do that. This is the part where like, I would love to improve like find a system that has to work distributed, which I don't know. So like, uh, if you know something, let me know. Um, how can you make removal happy uh, happen um, uh, where you don't have to trust the server? That would be um, pretty cool. Um, that, uh, David talks about using sealed secrets uh, brand meter to, to be read by the server. Did, I haven't looked at that yet. The Is it? um maybe let's quickly open it is it zero knowledge proofs then uh because this is what i started to uh okay i really need to um look this up um yeah okay i think i have an idea about it but um uh, yeah, I, 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 no, I, I need to look up on this. this is fantastic. Uh, um, uh, it would be great to learn more about it. Um, the other thing is um, um, Moxie, uh, the CEO of, of Signal, uh, also 2018-19 on the CCC, uh, gave a talk about the ecosystem is moving. Um, and there he also talked about um, he talked about like how do you use zero knowledge proofs um, to basically allow people to um, add someone to the group without them knowing who is in the group. So, well, if you, I, I don't know, but I think if you record all the traffic from the beginning on or like beginning on of a group, you could still identify which user belongs to a group. But I think if you get the dump of the signal database now a day, nowadays, like you get the dump here and right now and you don't know anything about the traffic or you didn't record any traffic um, with zero knowledge proofs because they use this, they basically, uh, like if you get this dump, you can't, you don't know who belongs to which group, which is fantastic. But basically like the metadata, uh, that, the metadata who belong, you know how many people are in a group, but the metadata who belongs to which group is not there. And this is, this is yeah, that's why the future is so bright. I mean, we, it feels like we're just in the beginning and, and yeah, Signal is doing so much that it's like, I feel like it's, it's like 10 steps ahead of, of everyone. And, um, but yeah. They don't do documents, they don't do other data. They, they're like really focused on their thing. And um, yeah, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm trying. <laughs> um, uh, thanks, so if I'm gonna try to use it then still have access to the unupdated document. Uh, yes. Um, well, yes and no. Um, basically, in, in, so how the client is currently implemented, um, the next time the client asks for an, uh, updates, in this case, it would um, receive a, a tombstone. I, I just call it because from CRDTs, there's tombstone, so I, so I called it uh, the same way, which is basically. And, and they, um, so if a, if a document gets deleted or if, and it, or if you get removed from a document, you receive this tombstone, and the client simply removes the document from your, your, your local storage on every device then. In reality, um, like 
you have no assurance that the user didn't make a copy of the document yesterday and just copy pasted everything into, um, I don't know, his Apple notes or whatever, uh, or like in a Word document. And so you, I mean, there's an inherent trust there. If you share something with someone, uh, you cannot take it away. Um, this, is, this is basically the idea. I mean, yes, the client does that, uh, remove sexes and and uh, um, if you're not fast enough or you don't uh, think about it you, it's basically gone um, we didn't back it up in any way then then it's gone which again <laughs> is, is you think about backups um, so yeah if you remove someone but they still have a backup uh, um, they still have it the only other thing that I can think of um, um, so so like I think the harsh reality is if I share something with you you have it, point. Um, the only thing what I can do to protect myself is um, protect, uh, to, to, to make, uh, well, I can watermark it. Um, so I could uh, make sure that if I share something with 10 other people, I mean, if I share something with only with you and you leak it, then I know it's you. If I know it's not me, um, if you share it with ten people and everybody gets a watermark version, then um, for specifically for them, um, which would not be possible with the current protocol with Mac on, but yeah, um, um, you will watermark it for every person. Um, basically, you could at least prove that they leaked it. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, this, the, there are probably like these are limitations of, of harsh realities. <laughs> um, and there was another one uh, about mm -hmm. aren't they relying on Intel SGX? Um, this is this, um, uh, they are doing this definitely for the, the contact comparison. Um, so this is why I also like. When I when I started to create uh, um, so uh, to create the, the contact adding flow, um, I thought also like oh I could verify phone numbers and then just compare um, contact lists. But um, then I saw this blog post and realized like yeah okay in the past they used hashes and and then just sent them to the server. But in the end it's like a really bad idea because um, you could quickly check that uh, uh, even if you use um, SHA. Uh, 256 uh, um, and you know the phone number you hash it you basically know um, the, the entry in the database and, and uh, um, so I felt very uncomfortable like sending um, hashes of your whole contact list to, to the server and yes with basically Intel S SGX um, the secure processing um, uh, they nowadays uh, the client can verify that um, then the, this code to compare it to other contact lists is run in a secure environment. And yeah, again, they, they know nothing in the end. Um, if if we well, yeah, uh, I think this is this is possible because of this SGX thing. And um, yeah, it's really really again they're like ten steps ahead. Um, uh, the client can just trust it. Yes, <laughs> this is probably the, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, another problem. <laughs> another problem for another time, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, that's it, I think. No more questions left. Like, again, um, like, I don't know if maybe, maybe I do more QA. So, so I'm gonna. Um, probably gonna try to find more time and and um, yeah, for this, uh, well, I, I will uh, focus more of my time on on this and maybe I do a, a weekly roundtable, organize something where, where we can uh, where someone can can brainstorm ideas. Um, I don't know. Um, if you're interested, drop me a message and and if there are not if there are enough people interested, like. I would love to like talk about what I'm doing, get your ideas, verify them, cross verify them. This is this is something that would be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So there's there's there would be a, a personal benefit of mine. But yeah, if you're interested, um, I would love to have you all there. And yeah, 
thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm really yes. glad this happened today. It's excellent. Nick, thanks again for coming. It was really cool talk. All people very interested. A lot of questions, a lot of interactions. And please contact Nick if you uh, if you want to contribute. If you have ideas, Nick is open. Um, we hope we see each other again. Maybe also at the Sec for Dev uh, as well. Um, so please stay in touch. Uh, thanks again for all for coming. It was really cool. And Nick, uh, we hear each other again, hopefully uh, exactly. soon enough. And then, yeah, I wish you all a nice evening. Take care and uh, goodbye till next month. See you. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.